Good afternoon, ANT family. Good afternoon. Happy Sunday. Happy New Year. Happy everything to you this Sunday. I'm really, really looking forward to getting into today's message. Um, but just before we do, I would like you to get your journals. If you have not, your iPad, your devices, your Bible, whatever it is that you have in hand, because I really want you to take a note. I'm going to be speaking to you on this thought of a God word heart, a God word heart. Hallelujah. A God word heart. And you know, this is a message that has been on my heart um, for the last, I don't even know, the last week and a half. And I really do believe that it is a message in season. And I really do believe that it is a call that God is bringing us into to have this posture of heart, to have a God word heart heart hallelujah so just before we start i'm gonna pray amen and i'm gonna i'm just gonna really open up this session father we just want to thank you we want to honor you we want to glorify you we want to thank you for your goodness we want to thank you for your mercies that are new every single morning hallelujah god as you have been speaking to me and you've been telling me that this is the hour that you desire to move and to breathe upon your children lord god i am just praying right now father god that your children um, will really experience this in the mighty name of jesus that they will experience your wonder, that they will experience your truth, that they will experience your power in this season. One of the things that the Lord has been speaking to me about is revival revival and i believe that this is a time that the lord desires to revive you according to his loving kindness and so father as the message goes out let there be a stirring in the hearts of your children let there be a resuscitation let there be a revival let there be an outpouring of your spirit upon your children may there be a rekindling may there be a fresh revival lord god a, a fresh awakening that comes upon your children children in the name of Jesus. If you believe that, I want you to raise your hands right now, wherever you are, and just begin to receive the outpouring of God's spirit, the outpouring of his refreshing, the outpouring of his power, the outpouring of his glory, the outpouring of his truth, the outpouring of who he is, the revelation of who he is, the revelation of his nature and his character. Lord, I receive it today. Just say that right now in your home right now i receive it today i receive your power i receive your glory i receive a fresh revelation of who you are i receive it in my home right now i receive it for my family i receive it for my siblings i receive it for my friends i receive it right now with the people that i work with that they shall encounter who you are i receive i want you to write that in the chat today i receive hallelujah hallelujah god is in the room today god is in the youtube today i'm excited i am excited to see what god does in 2022 a god word heart that's what we desire that's what we need in this generation in this culture a god word heart hallelujah first samuel 13 verses 14 it says but now your kingdom shall not continue the lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart and the lord has commanded him to be a commander over his people because you have not kept what the lord commanded you let's skip down to first samuel 15 verses 1 to 3 then we'll be reading from verses 7 to 13 it reads, Samuel also said to Saul, the Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people, over Israel. Now, therefore, heed the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I will punish Amalek for what he did to Israel, how he ambushed him on the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and attack Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and do not spare them, but kill both man and and woman, infant and nursing child, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. And so attacked the Amalekites 
from Havilah all the way to Shur, which is east of Egypt. He also took Agag, king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people sped Agag, oh no, and the best of the sheep, the oxen, the fatlings, the lambs, and all that was good and were unwilling to utterly destroy them. But everything despised and worthless that they utterly destroyed. Now the word of the Lord came to Samuel saying, I greatly regret that I have set up Saul as king. For he has turned back from following me and has not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel. And he cried out to the Lord all night. So when Samuel rose early in the morning to meet Saul, it was told Samuel saying, Saul went to Carmel and indeed he set up a monument for himself. My gosh, it just gets worse. And he has <laughs> gone on around, passed by and gone down to Gilgal. Then Samuel went to Saul and Saul said to him, Blessed are you of the Lord, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Like I said, a Godward heart, a Godward heart. What is a Godward heart? A Godward heart is a heart that is turned towards the Lord. It's a heart that has its attention on the Lord. It's a heart that is in reach for God. It's, it's a heart that is enamored by God. A God would hurt. I want you to type that in the chat right now. I like energy. I like engagement. I want you to say, I want a God would hurt. I want a God would hurt. So this passage of scripture, we, we see Saul. Saul is king of Israel at this time. And funnily enough, he's at this point, he's probably been king for like two and a half years or so at this point. And so we see, we find Saul and God has given him a clear instruction. We all heard it, right? God said, look, I want you to destroy everything, as in every single thing that I am saying to you, I want it gone, done, finito, right? And we find that Saul decides to do partially what God has said. Partially. He destroys, he, he, he kills the worthless things, he destroys the, the worthless things, and then on top of that, he preserves the king, King Agag, um, and he creates a monument in the process. Hmm. So, so, so. But I believe that there are certain things that we can learn from soul when it comes to having a Godward heart. I know it sounds funny. I know you would have wanted me to present to you David, you know, a man after God's own heart. Or I don't know who else, you know, Joseph, maybe, you know, to create, you know, evidence of what it means to have a Godward heart. But I believe that there are key principles that we can pull from the book of Samuel, specifically chapter 15, in terms of from the moment that God gives him the instruction to the moment that the kingdom is spoken, that the kingdom is going to be taken from him at the end of first Samuel 15 and so we find like I said that Saul has preserved you know um, what you know um, some of the stuff and has done partially what God has said and so number one the first thing I want us to really understand about what it means to have a Godward heart is that a Godward heart recognizes that doing a version of what God said is really not doing what God said. Doing a version of what God said. So did his own version of what God had said. And then he deceived himself to think that he was doing something good. But a version of what God said is still not what God said. He didn't say preserve. He didn't say, don't king, king, Acre. He said, destroy everything. That was the instruction that came to him through Samuel. And, you know, many of us, you know, we do versions of what God said. We do versions. We do what's comfortable for us. We do what's convenient for us, you know. But that's a version. It's not what God said. Wow. It's a version of it. It's a version that fits your narrative, but it's not the version that fits God's narrative. And so we want to be a Godward heart recognizes that it's important for me to follow through with all that God has said. 
A Godward heart is responsive to the directions and the instructions of God. A Godward heart says that I'm not going to oppose God because I'm choosing to do what I want to do. This week I was in prayer and, you know, the, the day before, probably it was Wednesday, I can't remember, me and my husband were watching a particular show, a particular episode, and we were, near, we were binge watching basically. Was it Wednesday, Thursday? I can't remember. Binge watching this show or whatever. And, you know, um, I went to sleep. I got a sensitive spirit. You know, I just, I have very vivid dreams. And so I had the worst dream ever, like after watching that show. So I was in prayer, you know, and I was actually reading this passage of scripture before I started praying. And the Lord said to me, you know, um, don't, don't, don't watch the show again. So I'm like, oh, there's one more episode left though. And I need to find out <laughs> who that is. You know what I'm saying? I need to find out who it is that did what they did. And so I'm rationalizing in my mind, like, okay, so what, God, are you saying that the next season, <laughs> you know, I don't watch that. And then I watch this episode. I mean, there's only one episode, but what is the harm of it, God? Like, what is the harm of me watching one more episode? And then it dawned on me that based on what I wanted to do, I was willing to do a version of what God said to suit me. How humbling in that moment, right? That God has given me an instruction that is to preserve me, to preserve my spirit, to keep me pure, to guard my heart. And I'm giving a suggestion back to God about what his instruction could look like for me in my convenience. <laughs> and so when God highlighted, yo, like, what's good? Like, I said what I said, you know? Like, I don't understand, you know? I said what I said. Like, I said, God, wow, I repent. I repent. I saw my humanity in that moment. I saw my pride in that moment. And what we see you know, with Saul is that he had the audacity, everyone say audacity, audacity, to try and convince Samuel, the one that brought the message in the first place, that he was doing the work of God. He said, he, he even said, what, what's good, Samuel? I have performed all that God has said. It wasn't what God said. A God would heart understands and recognizes that variations of what God said is not what he said. And it released and it, and it, it, it really, really um, revealed the posture of Saul's heart. His ego got in the way. His selfish ambition got in the way. It was at the forefront. His insecurity, if you read from the beginning when Saul is introduced in this monarchy, because he's the first king that is presented to be over Israel, right? Like you can tell this man was insecure from the, his insecurities were bleeding out of his disobedience. A God would hurt. If it's good, but not God, it's not worth it. If it's good and it's not God, it's not worth it. Okay. It's not worth it. Lit literally, so compromised his whole, co his whole calling, his whole position, his dynasty. And this wasn't the first time. If you skip back a few chapters, he'd done something similar to what he's doing now. This is just on a greater scale. And later on, when you read on, God gives a similar instruction to David and David follows through with everything that God said. He was the man that was after God's own heart. Let's read 1 Samuel 15, 22 to 23. It says, but Samuel replied, what is more pleasing to the Lord? Your burnt offerings and sacrifices or your obedience to his voice? Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice and submission is better than offering the fat of rams. Rebellion is as sinful as witchcraft and stubbornness, as bad as worshipping idols. So because you have rejected the command of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Was it really worth it, Saul? Is it really worth it, sis? Is it really worth it, bro? God's been saying it from 2019. Yet, yeah. dot, dot, dot. 
Rebellion here in this context, in the Hebrew context, is to, is to push against. It's, it's, it's arrogance. It's presumption. It's presumption is as sinful as witchcraft. Arrogance, pride, it's the, the ability to push back on what God has said. So when in that moment when God was giving me that instruction this week, and I was literally with me trying to find what was suiting me, I was pushing back against God. In this context, Samuel was saying that obedience, the submission to God is better than the appearance of what seems good. You can offer burnt offerings. As he said, like, so I, look, I, I preserved the best. Um, Saul was really trying to say, I preserved the best, you know, for God. That doesn't matter. What looks good is not what God said. <clears throat> It's not what God said. A Godward heart is only interested in following through with what God said. That's not easy, but it is better. And like I said, God um, compromised his whole calling based on the pride of his heart. Check your heart, beloved. Check your heart. Heart check 101. The next thing I want to highlight about a Godward heart is that a Godward heart understands the necessity of accountability. A Godward heart understands the necessity of accountability. As we see in this passage of scripture, Saul came, Samuel came to Saul. He'd given him the instruction in the beginning. Then later on, God highlights and gives Samuel insight into what was actually happening. Can you imagine? Samuel wasn't even there. You know what I'm saying? About what Saul was doing in that moment. We need, we need not just friends, but friends that are discerning. Mm. Friends that have the spirit of God in them, that have insight into a matter. Friends that have the spirit of God in them, but we can give an account to them. That won't allow us, won't turn a blind eye to something that we are doing. We need friends to check us. That are going to check us, right? This week, you know, I was um, talking to my mentor, hallelujah. And I was, I was just like sharing with her. I had a question on my heart, you know, something that was concerning me. Um, And and she responded and she said, you know, um, check your heart. You know, that's pride. Like she checked me. She was just like, you need to check your heart. And in that moment, like, first I thought, whoa, okay, (laughs) one second. I was asking a question, okay. Um, So can you answer the question? But she was answering the question. It hurt. It hurt. But I honoured what she had to say in that moment. Because I recognise that this is a woman assigned to my life. This is a woman that I'm giving permission into my life. And so she's just not seeing the surface. She's seeing the heart. God has given her insight based on the position that she has in my life. Now, it hurt me, but I heard it. It hurt me, but I heard it. Right. Not everything is going to be comfortable. Not everything is going to be pleasant. But the key thing about a Godward heart is that a Godward heart recognizes the voice of God in the people that they have around them. Okay. Preach, Pastor, preach. Okay. I honor her voice. So I didn't push back against what she said. I didn't even argue. Even if I didn't understand it, yes, I can gain clarity or whatever. But at the end of that phone call, I was on my knees in that room. What she said, it was one sentence, but it led me on my knees to pray and say, God, just check my heart. Watch my heart, God. I I didn't treat her word as common. I didn't treat it as ordinary. In the Hebrew, when you look at the, the, op- the opposing word of honor, it is to treat something as ordinary, okay. to get familiar with something. It's to treat something as common. She's not a common person in my life. I have identified her as a mentor, someone to speak into my life. I honor her. And so I heard God in what she was saying and it led me to, her, to my knees. That's what we need. People in our lives, not yes men, not men that are used to you being who you are. People that see you in the spirit, okay. 
and are able to draw you out and say that ain't working. God showed me that you are out of line. You are misaligned. Like you're missing it. Is this really what you want to do? Okay. Is this really where you're going? Is this really what you want? A Godward heart. Proverbs eleven fourteen says, where there is no counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Hallelujah. There is safety, beloved. In the multitude of counselors, when you look at that root, root word of counselors, basically what it's trying to, to signify, what it's trying to say is people that are godly. People that have the spirit of God in them, where there is in the multitude of people that have the spirit of God in them, that have a wisdom, that have a precision, there is safety. You have to be willing to take correction. Okay. You have to be willing. But let me tell you something. I wasn't always as receptive like that to the words of those that were around me. I thought I knew it all, you know. I fought because I was gifted. I fought because, you know what I'm saying? The pride of the heart. Oh, I've got my experience. It's not about where you think you are in your life. It's about who you are allowing to speak into your life, to draw you into the fullness of what God has said. But a wounded heart will always see correction as an indictment. They'll always see it that way. An unhealed heart will always see correction as opposition rather than repositioning. Mm, okay. They will see it. They will stand on the defense. They will see it as opposition. Yeah. But, sweetie, it's repositioning. Wow. God is trying to use people in your life to position you, to preserve your dynasty, to preserve your legacy, to preserve the call on your life. Yeah. You need people. You need to be accountable. You need to pursue it. You need to go after it. Hallelujah. Correction is necessary. Correction is evidence of sonship. Wow, it is. Good. It's the evidence of sonship. So good. Hebrews 12 verses 5 to 9. And it says, And have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children. He said, my child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline and don't give up when he corrects you. For the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. As you endure this divine discipline, hallelujah, remember that God is treating you as his own children. Whoever heard of a child who was never disciplined by its father? Some versions saying, not corrected by the father. Mm -hmm. If God doesn't discipline you as, his, or does, as he does all of his children, mm -hmm. it means that you are illegitimate mm -hmm. and are not really his children at all. Mm -hmm. Since we respected our earthly fathers mm -hmm. who disciplined us, shouldn't we submit even more to the discipline of the father of our spirits mm -hmm. and live forever? My gosh. Your response tells me everything about the condition of your heart, about where you are at, right? It takes you, it tells, you, tells me everything because a Godward heart understands the necessity of accountability, understands about having the right people around them that can speak. You can hear God in what they're saying. A, 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 a Godward heart is receptive to the correction of the Father through the, the Holy Spirit, the promptings, the convictions of, of the Holy Ghost in their life. You know, a, a, a Godward heart is open. It's inviting of correction. I need this. Wow. I need this. When I had that conversation, I reminded myself that I need this. Wow. Okay. Maturity lets you know I need this. If I want to grow and go far, I need this. I want you to type that in the chat. I need this. I need this. I need accountability. I need to make myself accountability. I need to level up and elevate my conversations with people. I don't want to be talking about the same thing. I don't want to keep talking about how broken I am. I don't want to be talking about how lost I am. I don't want to keep talking about the dreams and the visions that God has given to me. I want to elevate the conversation. Okay. Elevate the conversation. Hmm. I need it. 
Because the question is, is do you have a wounded heart? Is it misinterpreting correction from the people assigned to your heart? I want you to think about that. Where in my heart is wounded? Where am I missing it? Where in my understanding of who God is? Am I misinterpreting when he corrects me? Okay. Because that's, that's that when you can identify that and be real about that, then you can give permission to God to heal that area. Yeah. Right. Okay. You give him space. You give him room. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. The next thing about a Godward heart is that a Godward heart mm -hmm. is not consumed by the thoughts or opinions of men. The scripture speaks about in, in the book of Proverbs that, you know, the, the, the fear of man is like a snare. It's a snare. It's dis it, it, it disables us. Right. right? Mm. After Saul was told that he was going to be replaced, can you imagine? The, the I want, audacity. Everyone just say audacity. audacity. Right? And the thing is, I can't judge Saul because we've all been there, right? So, and we're doing it. Some of us are doing it now, right? <laughs> so, it is what it is. But that's why we got to love him, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. After Saul was told that he was going to be replaced, um, Saul still wanted to have an appearance of righteousness. So, this is after God has said, this, the kingdom's going to be ripped away from you. Oh, gosh. First Samuel 15, 24 to 25. Like, I have to present my evidence. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord in your words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now, therefore, please pardon my sin and return with me that I may worship the Lord. Then he said, I have sinned, yet honor me now, please, before the elders of my people and before Israel and return with me that I may worship the Lord your God. What is it? Are you repentant or are you looking at what God? I mean, come on, choose what you want to do, dude. Like, I need to know. What is it going to be? What do you want? His heart was divided. His heart was consumed by the things of men. Mm. A Godward heart cares more about what God sees than what men will see. Mm. God doesn't watch appearance. He looks at the heart. He desires to us for, to be mindful only of what he thinks and not men. Mm. We're living for an audience of one. I'm living in light of Christ. I'm living in light of his word. I'm living in light of his Holy Spirit that leads me and guides me. That's how I want to live. I don't want to live in line with men. You know, my prayer is every single day. I say, God, give me a heart that is after you. God, give me confidence. Give me courage to do what you tell me to do. Lord, remove me completely. Just disconnect me from every part of me that will still want to do what I feel think men want me to do God I want to be like you I want to be like Jesus Jesus didn't care what the Pharisees and the Sadducees were saying he didn't, he didn't care that wasn't his mission that wasn't part of his assignment he lived in light of what the father said he said I only do what I see my father doing and that's how you break the spirit of fear that's how you break the hold of pleasing men it's, it's staying in connection with the father that's how you break it. You don't, you don't break the spirit of fear on your own merit. We all have a desire to want to please someone. We all have that desire. It's about pointing and directing that desire towards God. Okay. That's what it's about. Yeah. We want to be a people that walk in line with God. We, we're not here to give filthy rags to God. Right. We're not here to just give, you know, on, based on the merit of what other people are applauding. We want an applause in heaven. We want an applause from the cloud of witnesses. We want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. That's what we want to hear. And if that's not what you want to hear right now, say, God, I want, I want a heart that hears only your applause. I want a heart that only hears, well done and good, faithful servant. I want that heart, Lord. I want a heart that is obedient, that will follow through with what you're telling me to do. I want that heart. Change me. Transform me. Serve Circumcise my heart. Take away the old me. Hallelujah. I want that heart. 
I want that heart, Lord. I want that. I want that. Put that in the chat. I want that. I want that heart. I want that enthusiasm. I want that desire, God. I want it to burn inside of me. I want the conviction of the Holy Ghost to come upon me every time I misalign myself and I bring myself under the jurisdiction of men that puts myself under, under the opinions of man. I want that heart. I want that heart, God. Disconnect me. Heal me. Do what you've got to do so that I can be found as a good and faithful servant. Well done. That's what we want to live for. We want to live in light of eternity. We want to live in light of God. And we're not perfect. But we're choosing to go after the upward call. We want to go after God. We want to have a Godward heart in the house of A&T. We want to be real disciples. We don't want to play games. We don't want to just have a public appearance. We don't want to be those people that in private we're messed up. And in public we have an appearance of looking good, of looking righteous, looking like we worship. We don't want that. We want to be real. We want to be authentic. God, I want to be authentic. I said, God, I want the real thing. That's my prayer. When I come up here to speak, I want the real thing. I don't want just my words. I don't want how I'm, how eloquently I'm speaking to go through your ears. I don't want that. I want you to feel glory. I want you to feel the presence of God. I want you to be transformed. I want you to be renewed in the spirit of your mind because my heart is yielded to the spirit of God. And so because my heart is yielded to the spirit of God. You feel it right where you are. You don't even need to be in the room. You don't need to be in the room. The scripture says in Acts that Peter and them man were just throwing around handkerchiefs and people were being healed. That's the power I'm talking about. Listen, that's the power that's going to shift the culture. That's the power. That's what people want to see. Authenticity. Do you love your wife? Do you love your husband? Are you really living for this thing? Do your children know you? Are you really living this thing? Are you out here in these streets twerking and doing what you need to do behind closed doors and then giving us a version of Jesus? Jesus. Oh no, we want to be real in the house of A&T. But that's going to come with authenticity. Hmm. With God. Hey. That's going to come with, like God, I am broken. Listen, when I went through my church, her experience, it was ugly. It was messy. I didn't even want to pray. I didn't even want God. I didn't even know what I believed anymore. I said, I don't believe in prophecy and all of that. You guys stop doing all of that. That's, I don't care. But guess where I began? I began right there. My feelings, God, I don't know if I believe. I don't know what this, that was me authentically stepping into the presence of God. I said, God, you're going to have to heal my unbelief. You're going to have to, you're going to have to, I don't know, turn a jump into water or something like that (laughs) for me to believe. I came with my authentic self. I didn't come with a lie. I didn't come trying to pray in the spirit and do what looked good to other people. I came with the real me. And it was the real me that God accepted. He accepts this version as much as he's accepting the version you guys are getting today. Wow, that's Mm. good. Every version is welcome in the presence of God. Why? Because God knows he has the power to lead you into triumph. He knows that. He's all-knowing. And it's time for you to be informed of that truth. Because the further you are away from that truth is the further you are away from God. Lastly, a Godward heart seeks to be better than. Mm. 1 Samuel verse 28, it says, So Samuel said to him, The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today and has given it to a neighbor of yours who is better than you, my God, seke basitia, rende basikia babasataya, better than you. That context, the Hebrew context of better than you is to say good and pleasant to God, agreeable, excellent of kind. God wasn't trying to diminish soul in that way. It was just that soul's heart was not aligned. It was it was not good and pleasant to God. It wasn't agreeable. It wasn't excellent of kind. But he said, there's someone out there that has that type of heart. That's what we should desire to be, pleasant to him. 
him, excellent in kind, a man after God's own heart. That's our desire, people of God. We want to, we have to yearn for that, a desire to please him in private as much as in public. Lord, I want your heart. I desire, give me your heart. That's the type of people, Ronde Basikia, that we want to be. God, give me your heart. Give me a heart, Lord, that is pleasant to you, that is excellent in every way. Lord, I am just mis misusing the things that you've given to me. I want to be a good steward based on the posture of my heart. I want to be evidence of your spirit working on me. I want to be evidence of that God, of a responsive heart, a heart that is open to you. I want to be a landmark. We should want to desire to be a landmark of God's glory. I want to be a landmark of God's glory. Yes, A&T, we want to be people that are landmarks of glory, monuments of glory, that when I step into the room, when I step into tombs, when I step into the hospital, it's not just power words that you're hearing you're feeling the presence of God you're feeling the glory of God you're feeling his power you're feeling his shaking you're feeling his moving as a result of my intimacy with God as a result of my response to God on my heart as a response of his rebuke to me as a response of his correction oh you're not just feeling mere words you're not just seeing a performance you're seeing God that's the heart I want I want that. I want that heart. Yes, God. And wherever you are, I want you to say that right now. I want that, Lord. I want that. Give me that heart, Jesus. Give me that heart, Lord God. Give me that heart, Lord Jesus. Give me that heart, Give me that heart, Lord Jesus. Give me that heart, Jesus. Give me that heart, Lord God. That's the heart I want. I'm after it. Work on me, Lord God. Correct me, oh God. Because I don't want to just be a person that is talking the talk but I want to be a person of glory yes God yes Jesus I want that I don't want to compromise no more I don't want to compromise no more, God. I understand that there's too much on the line. There's too much people on the line. There's too many souls on the line. The kingdom is on the line. Oh, God, I want you to heal my heart. Lord, there's people connected to me. There's people connected to my healing. There's people connected to my growth. There are people connected to my development. God, I want that heart. I want that heart, Jesus. I want that heart. God, a Godward heart seeks to be better than what is a Godward heart, Susan? It's, it's a heart that is towards God, a heart in reach of God, a heart that has its attention on God, a heart that is willing and open. A Godward heart recognizes that doing a version of what God said is really not doing what God said. Two, a Godward heart understands the necessity of accountability. Three, a Godward heart is not consumed by the thoughts or opinions of man. A Godward heart, four, seeks to be better than a Godward heart. The question is, Pastor Susan, how does one gain and maintain a Godward heart? How does one do that, Susan? I want it. You know, I've heard the prayers, but how does it look practically? Like, I want to know. One, it's, it's authentic relationship with God. Yep, yep. What do I mean by that is it's us presenting our true selves to God and giving him room to reveal his true self to us. It's our, it's our conversations with God on a daily basis. It's, it's day and night. Lord, here I am. Lord, I'm struggling. Lord, I'm, I'm broken. Lord, Lord, I didn't get it right today. And I, I know your grace, your grace is sufficient. So grant me grace, God. Grant me grace. I, I want to do it right, Lord God. I want to I wanna do it right, Lord. I'm messed up, Lord. Today, I, I really didn't want to do it, God. But I come to you. I present myself as a living sacrifice. It's, it's, it's God. What do you want from me today? Like, Lord, what is your view of my life for this next year. I want to know your will for my life, God. I'm confused. I don't know what it is that I should be doing, but God, give me understanding. Give me revelation. It is a real conversation with God. I, I, I want us to be real with God. I want us to be authentic. 
with God. Second thing is, is, is knowing, it's knowing him through the word. Yeah. Conversations are good okay. with God. They're good, they're good. But we need the word. Yes. Yes. The word informs us of, of his nature, yeah. of, of, his, of his heart, of his mind, you know, of, of, of who he is, his character, his, his works. It informs us of that. And we, we learn him through the word of God. We need that word. It's, it's our bread of life. It's yeah. give me this day, our daily bread. You know what Jesus was saying when you look at it in the Greek, what Jesus was saying, give me a word for today. I need a word for today. Lord, give me a word. I need a word today. I'm going into work and I might compromise some things, but give me a word that will sustain me until the next day. Our oh God is Tuesday today. Lord, I come to you. Give me the daily bread today I, I need a word Lord God I'm looking through your scriptures I'm finding it hard to stay pure in my relationship I know that we're not meant to be doing this but God give me a word give me a word of escape so I know what to do so I know the direction I should take Lord give me a word today daily bread okay it's Thursday now God I'm struggling in my mind I'm struggling in the way that I see people I'm struggling in the way I see my life but I need a word today that will sustain me I feel suicidal I feel heavy but God give me a word I know you got a word okay you got a verse Psalms 139 that your 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 thoughts towards me are precious that they are good I will hold on to that word because I have purpose I have identity in you oh God yes Friday has come Friday Lord I'm tempted Lord I want to do my own thing today thank God it's Friday but I want to let loose in this place lord give me a word today that's gonna sustain me through the weekend that's gonna allow me to say no to the things that i know i'm not meant to be doing give me a word it's saturday lord oh gosh i got urges i got urges i'm by myself i'm bored i don't know what to do but give me a word give me a way out of escape that's what your word says okay thank you jesus sunday comes oh we got the re-up now oh this is supplementary i've been going through the week listening to the word reading the word meditating on the word this is just supply this is just keeping me going up so i can step into monday and when monday comes i can defeat that demon too you need to know god you need to know your word hallelujah it's, it's, it's the fellowship the third thing the the fellowship with the holy spirit we've been given an advocate yeah. We've been given a helper. Yeah. My gosh, God, Jesus said, I must go. But when I go, you will receive power. You will receive a helper. We have a helper. It, it marks us. It, 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 it lets people know it, it, the fruit. The fruit. It lets, it's a guarantee for his return. Right? The Holy Spirit, people of God. We need the fellowship of it. I'm not talking about rolling on the floor and speaking in tongues. No, 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 no. I ain't talking about all of that. That stuff is great. It has its time. It has its place. But I'm talking about on a daily basis. Holy Spirit, okay? Give me some insight today. I need it. Speak to me. Convict me of sin. Lead me into all truth. The Bible says that it's the Spirit of God that knows the mind of God. Show me the mind of God, spirit of the living. Show me the mind of God. Show me the things that have been freely given to me. Stop living your life outside of the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Stop it. Okay. Fellowship, intimacy with the Holy Spirit. My gosh, five. We, we, we know all of this, but we need to be doers of the word. A Godward heart is a doer of the word, not just a hearer. I, I heard the word that Pastor Susan said on Sunday. No, 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 no. I want you to do it. I, I, I need you to do it. It says, receive the implanted word of God that is able to save your soul. Listen, the renewal, the regeneration of your soul comes through what you do with the word. What you do. Yeah, we don't want to just be hearers in the house of A&T. We want to be doers. We want to, and it brings you into greater knowledge of who God is. 
That's what it does. Every time I, I do the word, every time I'm obedient to the word, oh, wow, God, you're so loving, you're so kind, you're so gracious. Wow, I've, I've found out another aspect of God. Every time I do the word, be love your neighbor as you love yourself. Oh, wow, I understand now that freely you give and freely you will receive. It is better to give than it is to receive. I understand it now, God, because I did it. Yeah, it leads you into greater knowledge. Lastly, lastly, staying plugged into community. Community is not an option. Community is not an option. It is vital. It is our lifeline. There is a time to be with God and there is a time to be in community, people of God. It's not an option. Sunday should no longer be an option for you. If you are dire in your spirit, it should not be an option. If you are struggling, it should not be an option. Oh God, I am choosing to be in the house of God. Hallelujah. I'm choosing to be there. It's not an option anymore. I need this. You ain't been reading your word for five days straight. You're telling me you're under attack, demonic attack, and you don't want to be in community so we can pray for you, so you can be around the presence of God. The scripture says how good and pleasant it is for us to come together. It is like oil dripping from the beard of Aaron, the priest, the anointing. That Listen to me, people of God. There is something about community and we can't mess with it. We can't mess with it. Acts, in, in the book of Acts, they were known for community. It was the fellowship. It was the sharpening. They had all things in common. I didn't say they were best friends now. I didn't say they were homies and they were buddies and they were sleeping over them each other's house and all that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fellowship. The spirit of God. What does the word of God say? It says where two or three are gathered in my name. I am there in their midst. There's something about when, 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 the, when the assignment, when the mission is to be in community for the sake of the Lord. There is something God is moving in the conversations. There is an edification that is going on. There is a sharpening that is going on. There is something happening in your spirit that is going on. There is a heaviness that is lifting off of you. There is something about community, but community can't be an option no more. Mm. A God would heart understands that. They understand that God puts honor on community. He's an advocate of community. Right. You can't do this thing without community. Yeah. In the book of Peter, it says all of the brotherhood are suffering. Listen, we need to, we need to, listen, it's not just you, you know. It's not just you. There's someone else that probably needs to hear your voice. That needs your authenticity to say it has not been a good week for me. But I'm choosing to trust God. I'm here for that reason. I'm choosing him. Stop making things an option that are a necessity for your soul. Come on, baby. Stop it. Stop making accountability an option. Stop making transparency an option. Stop making it an option. You're starting to dishonor what God has put in place to elevate you. Staying plugged into community. A God would heart. That's what we need. If we want to change this world, if we want to go into the marketplaces, creatives, listen to me. If you truly want to make a mark in the industry, if you truly want to, listen, get with God. God, every person that God partnered with, they did a madness. It was revolutionary. Noah built an ark. Listen, yeah. Esther saved a generation, yeah. a, a nation of people. Deborah made victory happen. Listen, yeah. if you want to do something revolutionary, Daniel, when he heeded to the voice of God, when he had that conviction in his heart, when he chose to set himself apart, he did a madness from the chapter one all the way to chapter 12. Daniel was just doing a madness. He was in a Babylonian system. And the only thing they could identify him as is that the man with the spirit of God in him. Listen to me. If you want to move mountains, if you want to have a revolution, if you want to do a madness, Martin Luther King, he had a dream from God. And look where we are right now. It has shifted the way people interact with one another. Listen to me. Partnership with God. Partnership with God. 
a good word heart. Listen, design, the way they, listen, listen, some of the designs in the Bible, some of the monuments and stuff like that, that were designed in the Bible, they have nothing on what is designed right now. Nothing. The architecture, the fixtures, the gold, the, the, the things that they use, the materials, it has nothing to, if you're an architecture, if you are someone who does design, listen, pull from the heavens. Pull from the heavens. A God would heart. God, this is revealing you. It is revealing your glory, God. And I see it and I know it. And people don't know how you did it, but you have a connection. You have a channel. Oh God, I'm stepping into investment bankers right now. I'm speaking to you right now. Those that are in the corporate world and you're doing your thing. You're doing, you have answers because you have a connection to God. Daniel stepped in and he said, listen, I can interpret the dream for you. This is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. This is what we need to look. This, this is the word of the Lord. He didn't even need to hear King Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Come on. He said he, he came home, he heard that, you know, they were, gonna, they were killing and they were doing what they were going to do because King Nebuchadnezzar was mad. He was mad. He said, I need to know what this dream means. I don't even think he remembered the dream himself. That's why he was asking them to tell him <laughs> what the dream was. But that's another conversation. He's just like, and, and, and Daniel's first response was prayer. He came around with his community. He said, look, let's come together now. Can you give us a day, please? Can you give us one night, please? Let, we're we're going to figure this out, but I'm going to partner with God in this, in, concerning this situation. And so he said with his friends, look, we need to pray concerning this thing because I know that God is going to give an answer concerning this. I have a different channel. I have a different line to what these music, magicians and all them sorcerers have. I have God, the author and the finisher, the creator of heaven and earth where the bible says in genesis 1 that his spirit hovered upon the waters do you know who i'm connected to he said no, just give me a night it revolutionized everything it it even brought them promotion maybe the promotion that you're looking for is in your obedience to god who knows who knows a god would heart people of god it's time Yep. It's time to posture our hearts. Yeah. It's time to align our hearts. This is the Heart Check 101. That's the series. Heart Check. Heart Check. Check your heart. Let's check our hearts. Just begin wherever you are right now. Just begin to ask the Lord, create in me a clean heart. Just lift up your hands where you are. Just begin to have a conversation with God. Hallelujah. Have a conversation with God. Hallelujah, create in me a clean heart, Daddy God. Create in me a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart, Lord God. Hallelujah, give me a Godward heart, Lord God. Give me a Godward heart. Hallelujah, heal my heart, Lord Jesus. Heal my heart, Lord Jesus. Give me a Godward heart, Lord God. Give me a Godward heart. I want a heart that is after you. Yeah, I want a heart that is after you. Transform my heart. Heal my heart, Lord God. Heal my heart, Lord Jesus. 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 Yes, God, we want to have hearts that are after you. We want to have hearts that are after you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just begin to open up your mouth wherever you are. Lord, give me your heart. Listen, let that be, let that be your heart, your prayer today. Give me your heart, Lord Jesus. Give me your heart, Lord Jesus. I want your heart. I want to know what your heart is saying. I want to be in line with the rhythm of your heart, Lord God. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus, I know your heart for me. You want my heart to be whole. You want my heart to be secure. You want my heart to be known by you, Jesus. Oh, give me your heart, Lord God. Give Give me a revelation of your heart, Jesus. Give me a revelation of who you are. Give me revelation. Give me understanding in the name of Jesus. Lord, I want that. Give me your heart, Lord God. Give me your heart. I want your heart, Jesus. I want your heart. I want your heart. I want your heart, Jesus. Yeah, fill us up, oh God. 
Change our hearts, Jesus. Transform our hearts, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Give us your heart. Give us your heart, Lord God. Give us your heart, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even right now, some of you, God has been speaking to you about things that you should be doing, things you should be faithful to, things that you should be stewarding, things you should be implementing. Even right now, let's just raise up a heart of repentance. Lord, I repent. I repent, Lord God. I, 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 I missed it, Lord God. I, I, I focused my eyes on what was good, but what wasn't you, Lord God. Ah, oh, Lord, renew me. Lord, transform me. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus, align me. Align me, Jesus. Align me, oh God. Align me. Hallelujah. Realign me, Jesus. Give me the grace to follow through. Give me the grace to follow through, Jesus. Give me the grace to follow through. I want to be someone who follows through with your word. Follows through with your word. Follows through with your word. I want to be, Lord Jesus, someone who follows you all the way. Oh, God. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Jesus. Wherever you are right now, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Just pour it out. Even right now, guys, I'm, I'm going to give you a few seconds right now to digest this word. You know, oftentimes we just rush through and we just get to the end. But just a few seconds just to digest the word of God. The word that's been released. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we honor you. We praise your name, Lord God. We thank you for this word, Lord God. Lord, I even just want to thank you, Father, Lord God. Just for allowing me to be a vessel of your word, Lord God. And Father, I just ask and pray that this will not fall on, 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 on fallow ground, but it will fall, Lord God, on ground that is receptive, mm -hmm. responsive, Lord God. Mm -hmm. Help us to do your word, Jesus. Yes, God. Give us your heart, Lord Jesus. We want your heart. Yes, God, we want your heart. Just as the deer pants, Lord, we want to be people, Lord God, that are desperate for you, that can't do it without you. Mm. Yes, God, we worship you. We honor you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you, family. Thank you for being with us today. And yeah, we love you. <laughs> we pray you were blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye. Amen. Amen.